Yum, yum! Hey everybody and welcome back to Moto with Ellery. In this episode we're going to uh, look at faking HDR uh, environments. So um, sometimes you have an image or something that you want to use for an environment or a background, but it just doesn't have the uh, the kind of dynamic range that we need in order to actually use it as an environment. Well, uh, we're going to have a look at how we can do this and actually just fake it. And this won't work on all images, but it will work on, on quite a few, at least to uh, a certain extent. So I've got this concept uh, little ship here, which is kind of a uh, Deep Space Nine runabout meets a uh, puddle jumper from Stargate Atlantis uh, that needs an environment so we can get a better idea of what it's going to look like in space. So I'm going to hop over to the render tab and we're going to um, set up a, a shot of it here. And uh, and then we're going to look at uh, at how we can render this. So right now we've just got the default environment, uh, the, the gray to lighter gray gradient, and, uh, and it's fine for uh, just rendering the ship and kind of seeing it openly uh, without much going on. But if we want to get a better idea of it, um, you know, in its own kind of natural habitat, then we'll need to change a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this directional light. All right, so um, we, we don't have now any shadows coming from any specific area because we want this to be in space. And now in my images, I have this uh, nebula. Uh, this was created by uh, Ali Reese, very talented artist. And uh, special thanks to Ali for letting me use this. And um, and we want to take this and use this as an environment. Now, this isn't a spherical one or anything like that. It's just a uh, it's just a square environment. So I'm not going to worry a whole uh, lot about um, actually setting it up in the environment. I'm just going to start by dropping it down into the into the environment. So let's go in here, add layer, image map, and I want to use my clip browser and we'll just grab that and drop it in there and that'll set up to environment color which is fine and uh, let's check how that's mapped here so at default it's gone spherical on the Y which means we're gonna have a pull up there I'm gonna try changing it to spherical spherical on the Z um, that way if I have a pull it's gonna be down at either end so you know it works as you know the ship is flying at warp or something um, you know again this is not uh, I'm not gonna worry about setting everything up uh, just about getting it in here but if we look at this the, the problem is is that we're just not getting enough um, enough light contribution from this uh, to make it really work well alright um, so in order to do that we have a couple things that we could do we could always go to the environment tab uh, to the actual environment item and set the intensity up so let's go to three alright you can see this is it's just making the environment brighter but it's it's not really helping uh, any of the lighting on the ship itself. All right, so let's go ahead and undo that. All right, so the next thing that we'll want to consider is, you know, what actually is going on with a high dynamic range image. Um, we have brighter uh, brights, and it doesn't make our darks any brighter. So when we increase the brightness on the environment, that's just making the whole thing brighter. So even our blacks are going to be contributing a bit more. Um, so that's not what we want at all. What we want is more contrast because the dynamic range, remember, just really um, equates to contrast on an image. And the more of it you have, the the more variation you're going to have between dark and light areas. And and because of that, the better chance you'll have of getting something that uh, that looks good. Okay. So we're going to look at a couple of real quick ways that we can set this up and use this image. So um, the the very fastest way is to just take the uh, the image that you have itself, and I'm going to take it and duplicate it. And this one is also set to environment color, but I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. Now at first, it's just going to get really dark, which is not what we want. Um, but you'll notice one thing did happen. Now we're actually getting a bit more contrast, so it's actually giving us little bits of kind of highlights in some areas on the ship, but overall it's way too dark. And that's because we're multiplying by a range of 0 to 100%. So at the very brightest spot, if there's a pixel here that's pure white, it's going to end up being pure white. All right. Um, what we want to do is we want to increase the range. So I'm going to start here right off the bat um, by leaving the low value as is. We'll end up adjusting that a bit as well. But I'm going to take the high value and increase that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply it by 10. All right. And now what we're getting is a lot more bright coming from the brightness. And that's that's helping a bit, but uh, we're also getting a very quick fall off into darker areas. So what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to take the low value and I'm going to increase it to a hundred percent. So now we're going from kind of the original color all the way up to uh, ten times as bright. 
All right, now we'll notice there are going to be some artifacts here, and then it's going to get a little bit blown out, but we'll fix that also in a moment. But we want to see if we can get our lighting something a little bit better. Now, the one thing to remember about these is you may end up having to increase to really kind of wild numbers, uh, and it's all going to depend on the image that you are using. So let's go ahead and add another zero in here. And once we do that, we'll see we're actually, you know, this is probably, we finally overshot it. So I like to go in multiples of 10 because it's very quick to jump up in iterations and see when you're uh, when you're actually overshooting. So that's probably overshot right now. So um, we went from 1,000 to 10,000. That was too much. Let's split the difference and make it 5,000. And I think that's going to work quite a bit better. All right, so we'll see a couple of things going on. The first thing is that our the beautiful nebula has just been kind of destroyed in the background, and uh, it doesn't really work anymore as a backdrop. So before we even continue at all, I'm going to take this entire environment and duplicate it. And on this first environment, I'm going to turn off visible to camera. And on the second one, I'm going to turn off visible to everything else. And then I'm going to take this top environment here. I'm just going to hide it because I may want to do something with that a little bit later. But now you can see we're back to our normal kind of stock default values in the background, but we're definitely getting a lot more uh, light coming in the foreground. Okay, so what's actually being applied to the ship. And if we look like down here where we've got some light coming in, we do see that and that's working pretty well also. Now the, the last thing that you may want to do here on this fairly simple setup would be to split off your uh, transparent and your um, reflective uh, contributions. So let's go ahead and take this one again and I'm going to duplicate it again. And on this one I'm going to turn off indirect rays and then we'll go up to the top one and we'll turn off reflection and refraction. And now we probably are going to want to keep some kind of amplification uh, for the reflection and the refraction, but we don't want it to be quite this strong. So I'm actually going to drop my low value uh, down. Let's go down, not all the way, but maybe to 50. And then I'm going to go to just 1,000 on the on the high value there. So now you can see that our reflections are definitely not so overpowering. Uh, they're looking a little bit more muted and a little bit more um, in line with what we would expect to see with that visible backdrop. Uh, and that overall is is definitely starting to work. If we rotate around here, so I've got that uh, brighter nebula behind the camera, you can see that this is actually illuminating this craft fairly well. So, so that's definitely working. All right, and so this would be a good, quick, simple setup uh, in a way that you could do this without, um, you know, without a ton of extra setup. I want to show one extra way that you can do it, and I'm just going to go through it very quickly um, since we already have kind of the overall concept down for what we're working on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to, I'm going to start with just the uh, one that's dealing with lighting. That's the um, the uh, the environment tab with indirect rays uh, checked. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, take this uh, version of the nebula here, and I'm going to change it from environment control to driver A. All right, and first it's going to get dark again. That's okay. All right, and uh, we'll do one more thing with this before we go any farther, and that's change our blend mode from multiply back to normal. All right, so now we have this, and it can actually plug into a gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to add layer, processing, gradient. And the input parameter by default here has come into uh, distance to camera. We want to change that to driver A. And right off the bat, we're not going to see anything really happen. Uh, and that's because of two things. The first thing is that we have white across the board. And our blend mode is then also set to normal. And we want to multiply this the same way that we had multiplied um, our previous layer. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this blend mode to multiply. And then we'll see, we get back to kind of the almost original where we were uh, kind of spot here. Now, one thing to note is this isn't really going to change any uh, anything going on here with this high and low value. So just for the sake of keeping things uh, nice and tidy, I'm going to set these back to 0 and 100%. You see, it really didn't make any difference because it's just drawing from the image itself now. It's not really drawing from these high and low values. So now let's go back up to the gradient, and we're going to edit the gradient. And I'm going to leave my uh, my zero value, so that's where it's black at one. And I'm going to middle mouse click to add another one here at a hundred percent. And now what we're going to do is we're going to ratchet up this value here for my red, green, and blue. Now one thing you'll notice here is this is going to happen more quickly than it did um, with the underlying image uh, because we have the ability now to go all the way to white, whereas this image may have not had much, if any, actual white pixels in it. All right, so let's go ahead and start just by increasing the value. You know, maybe say to four or five, and then we'll let this go. 
and then we'll ratchet up a little bit more and we'll let this go a little bit more and we'll let this go so let's take this now then and go up to 500 all right and see now we're getting pretty overblown whereas remember we were at 5,000 percent um, and that's now this is far too much um, this is the equivalent of 5,000 percent because a value of one is a hundred percent all right so let's just take this and we'll again kind of back down I like to go in order of tens just because it makes it a little bit uh, quicker all right so yeah, somewhere like there that's actually a pretty good guess maybe we'll go up just a little bit more maybe we'll go to uh, 70 percent or 70 Okay, now the nice thing about doing this this way, uh, as opposed to just working with the images stacked on top of each other and using a blend mode, is that we have more control over uh, kind of how the colors fall off. So if I pull this gradient down like this, it's going to add more of a, of a spike at the high end, so where we have uh, the stars and it's going to stay the same down here in the low end. Now, likewise, I could also take this low end here and add a little bit more initial value by raising this up so it's going from black to lighter a little bit more quickly. So raising the, the curve on this low end is going to um, give us the ability to, uh, to kind of add just a little bit more fill, whereas uh, changing the color here at the high end is going to adjust um, how we have the highlights in our image. So I'm going to just kind of pull this up let me kind of really pull it up like this so we get a little bit more on these high ends. All right, so this is another way that you can play with uh, play with adjusting these. So one last tip and one thing that you may want to consider uh, if you're working with an image like this is to go beyond just the, the regular values of the image. And a good way to do that is to pull the image apart in something like Photoshop. So if I click over to Photoshop, you see I've got the image up, right? Um, and I've got here my color channels. And if you look, the blue and the green are looking fairly similar. It's just washed uh, nebula. It looks a lot like the overall brightness values in the image. But if we go to the red channel, you see actually get all of the individual stars. So you may want to think about adding another layer perhaps on top where you're multiplying even brighter um, with these stars. All right, so here let's actually take a quick look at how that would work. Um, so let's say I have this the way that I like it. You know, overall I think it's looking pretty good. Um, maybe let's uh, let's back this off just a little bit here. So uh, instead of a value of 70 here, I can set it down to 40. It's going to just kind of balance the whole thing down just a little bit. And I'm going to pull my um, my lows down there a little bit too. Okay, so this is looking a little bit darker. But now we can add in our, our stars to get a little additional impact. So I've got the stars over here separately. And I'm just going to drag and drop those in. And right now they're going to come in as environment color. Um, so you can see everything got dark again, right? But what I'm going to do is once again set this blend mode to multiply. And since I only have um, highlights where the stars are, I can go from 100%, which means unchanged, to a value something higher. So again, let's try like 5,000. And now this is going to uh, pull out a little bit more and accentuate just those little points of light. So you may, since those are small, you may have to go uh, to something fairly high. Let's go to, you know, we'll go up to. Uh, oops, up to 10,000 perhaps. And we're not going to be looking for a ton of extra illumination, but we're just going to be looking for a little bit of extra highlights. All right, and then if I want, I could also include something like this in my reflection layer so that I get a little bit more kick on my reflections. And you can also, just one extra thing here, you might want to check your minimum spot, especially when you're dealing with uh, your illumination level here. So if I take my minimum spot and increase it to something like uh, 10 pixels, it's going to blur out and soften where those stars are. So their light contribution isn't going to be a small an area of space. It's actually going to be coming from a little bit broader area, but it's also going to be uh, tapering off a little bit more slowly. All right, so there you go. That will allow you to uh, to get some decent lighting out of a low dynamic range or a standard dynamic range image. It will also help kind of amp up your reflections and overall just give you something a little bit uh, more interesting if you're dealing with an image like that. This also works very well with uh, you know real pho photography of things like uh, nebula, space images, stuff from NASA you can get. Um, this does a good job of kind of helping you grab something out of that that normally you really wouldn't be able to use for lighting and. Uh, 
uh, and actually use it for that purpose. So that does it for this one. If you like this video and videos like it, uh, consider following me on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Ellery, where you can get uh, downloadable versions of the videos as well as um, all of the source files for, a, uh, for all of the videos. And if you'd like this video and the downloadable files um, or any other episode, you can get those a la carte on Gumroad. That's gumroad.com slash Ellery. So check those out there. And also remember to check out Pixel Fondue for more great Moto tutorials. That does it for this one. Go make something cool, and I'll see you in the next episode.